Samsung Display demanded that I open this package and take a look at what they and MSI have come up with. And you know what I have to say to that? Demanded? What makes them think that they can tell me they what to do? the video. I see. And it's a pretty exciting one because inside this box is a world's first. It's a laptop. Mm. A laptop with a 240 hertz display. But wait, there's more. See how it's on, but the screen's still black. It's OLED and it runs at 1440p resolution, making this basically the dream display that I've been asking manufacturers to build for years. Now, all it has to do is live up to my lofty expectations. The competitive advantage of a high refresh rate display is pretty well understood at this point. There's the intuitive benefit, that is, if your display updates more frequently, obviously your eyes will get a more up-to-date view of what's going on in the game compared to your opponent. But there's a less obvious benefit as well. By reducing the delay or the latency between moving your hand and the changes being reflected on screen, you experience an improvement in input control that helps especially with tracking fast-moving targets. To be clear, this is not enough to turn a novice into a pro, but if you want to take advantage of every competitive edge, you'll find a high refresh rate display beneficial for everything from fast paced shooters like Doom Eternal to even racing games like Forza. We could cite our own findings for this, but we don't have to because we're not the only ones to explore it. In an experiment from Hanyang University published in 2019, 12 participants in their 20s and 30s were selected to play Aim Hero. And in a narrow play field with a refresh rate of 144 Hertz, participants were found to be firing just over 3% faster with 3% more accuracy than that same monitor set to 60 Hertz. When the play field was widened, the results are even more dramatic, with participants playing on 144 Hertz firing 4.5% faster with nearly 13% higher accuracy compared to their 60 Hertz scores. But high refresh rate alone is not enough. Take this display for example. It was cobbled together using a scaler from Zisworks and a generic 4K LCD laptop display. Way back in 2017, we had this thing going as high as 480 hertz. I mean, that sounds like a pretty responsive gaming experience, right? But the pixels themselves were so slow that they wouldn't even be finished transitioning to their new state when the next input signal came in, turning everything into a blurry mess as soon as you started panning the camera around. And while modern gaming LCDs have come a long way, to overcome this effect, they still rely on tricks like pixel overdrive and backlight strobing, each of which comes with their own drawbacks, like visual anomalies and reduced brightness. But OLEDs, like this one, have naturally much faster response times. Samsung rates this particular panel at roughly 10 times the speed of its LCD counterparts. That means that aside from the buttery smooth animations that we can expect with a 3070 Ti driving it at up to 240 Hertz, the image clarity as fast moving objects are going across the screen is on par or better than the best desktop gaming displays. Even compared to the best CRT displays, OLED offers superior clarity, making them a near enough alternative for all but the fussiest of retro gamers. We did a full video recently comparing OLED and CRT that actually has an extra detailed look at David's setup over on floatplane.com if you're into that. Man, that clarity though. Oh, it's so sharp. Whoa, what the crap is this guy? Blah, blah. F. Ah, there we go. What, what the? OLEDs are also well known for their ability to turn off individual pixels. I've been a cheerleader for this technology since the first time I laid eyes on it back in 2013, and it's because the high contrast that's enabled by perfect black levels does as much for the perceived resolution as increasing the actual pixel count. Man, does that ever create an immersive atmosphere for darker games like Stray, doesn't it? Oh no, kitty. I haven't actually played this yet, but it looks great on this. On that subject, it feels like for years we were stuck with either 1080p 
or 4K as our options for laptop panels. And it was so frustrating to me because at honestly, anywhere from 13 to 17 inches, the ideal resolution is actually 2560 by 1440 or 2560 by 1600. You get rid of the blockiness of 1080p, but without putting the additional strain on your GPU that comes with 4K, at least if you wanna run it native resolution. And someone, namely Samsung Display, finally listened. So not only do we get 240 Hertz OLED, but it runs at 1440p, meaning that the 3070 Ti in this machine will be able to drive modern games to look their best. And the Core i7-12800HK in here is actually a really important key to this as well. Because when you're really trying to push upwards of 100, 120 frames per second, CPU performance limitations that you otherwise wouldn't notice start to rear their ugly heads. Man, does that look sharp or what? Like, can you make out a pixel with your eye, Brandon? No. What just happened? Like I said, <laughs> it's not gonna turn you into a pro all of a sudden. Yep, I have no idea what happened there, but apparently I won, so maybe I lied. Maybe it does turn you into a pro gamer overnight. It doesn't. But a couple of fun side effects of OLED are that if you're playing a game like Stray, for example, that takes place mostly in the dark, your overall system power consumption will actually go down a small amount. And since OLED displays don't require a backlight, Samsung helpfully points out that the amount of blue light that they emit in the 415 to 455 nanometer wavelength range is actually greatly lessened. Here, take a look at this. This shiny little disc right here is a band pass filter that only allows light through in the 436 nanometer wavelength. When we hold it up to a camera and look at an LCD display, you can see how much blue light is coming through, but when we use the bandpass filter on our OLED display, you can hardly tell that it's on at all. Neat, right? By using dark mode in applications that support it, OLED can reduce power consumption and reduce eye strain caused by blue light. Anyway, the ability to control pixels individually comes with a plethora of other benefits. With a brightness floor of only 0.0005 nits, there is a vast expanse of potential colors that can be displayed that normally wouldn't be possible. And with a great number of colors comes a greater perceived contrast. This is a phenomenon we've talked about before, and it's called the Helmholtz Kohlrausch effect, where colors like yellow and green appear darker than other colors like red and magenta. You see, our eyes treat saturation and hue as though they're the same thing as brightness. Silly eyes. That's not how light works. Eyes more like lies. Am I right? Well, this effect becomes increasingly pronounced when these colors are on a background that shares a similar level of lightness, like this gray that you're looking at here. Using a backlight causes blacks to increase in lightness, changing them to more of a shade of gray. This reduces contrast, causing all colors but especially yellow and green, to appear dimmer by comparison. This defect in our eyeballs, or more realistically in our brain's perception, is being taken advantage of by this laptop. It can actually appear brighter without needing to be brighter. And dimmer screen equal more battery life. Battery life in laptop, good. Good like colorful banana from lttstore.com. And the obvious other benefit of more accurate, more rich color is in creative applications. Like, look at this. Here is the upcoming Channel Super Fun where Dennis attempts to hide in my house again, doing a lot of damage to my house. Like, look at this. What is logistics dragging up my driveway? Here's a hint. It's not a Valencia chair. It's Dennis and Colton. Whatever its capabilities are, MSI is marketing the Raider GE67HX as more of a gaming machine than a creator machine. So why don't we take a look at it? Over on the left, we've got USB-A, USB-C, as well as a headphone microphone combo jack, tons of cooling, more cooling at the back, along with two and a half gig ethernet, Thunderbolt HDMI and power in. And over on the right, we've got an SD card reader and two more USB type A ports. And there's this delightful little RGB underglow thing over at the front. It weighs just over five pounds. That's 2.4 kilos if you're into that kind of thing. So it's not a super lightweight laptop by any means, but it's not gonna be a complete backbreaker to carry around either. And when you consider the power inside it, it's 
downright reasonable. There are a few different configurations of this model, but on top of our Intel Core i7-12800HX and 3070Ti laptop GPU, in ours, we've got a one terabyte NVMe Gen 4x4 with another fourth gen slot open for expansion, 16 gigs of DDR5 4800 mega transfer per second RAM, Wi-Fi 6E, a 99.9 .9 watt hour battery, which is the legal limit to carry onto a plane, and as we mentioned before, the display is 15.6 inches with a resolution of 1440p. And if you haven't been following along, it's OLED. Freaking OLED. Freaking finally. Other configurations bump the graphics card up to a 3080 or 3080 Ti, can include up to an i9-12900HX, up to 32 gigs of RAM, and come with Windows 11 Pro instead of Home, with prices starting at $2,300 US dollars. So you can check out the links to this guy down below. Big thanks again to Samsung Display for showing us the future of laptop displays and for sponsoring this video. If you wanna see more, why not check out our Neo G9 showcase? It is very long and very curved, which is not something I knew I wanted.